And today to take a look at this 4x2 matrix with audio extraction and eARC support. Now it will allow us to connect up to four different media inputs. I can connect a PlayStation, a computer, a media, Android TV box and an Apple TV 4K all at the same time and then with one remote control or one physical button I can just switch between them to two different outputs which can be a projector or a TV, two TVs, two projectors, whatever we want. I will show you an interesting setup that I've got on the other side with a projector and one TV which might give you an idea of the potential that this matrix has and the solution that it will give us to some issues that we have, especially when we are talking about compatibility and eARC support, audio extraction and all that good stuff. But before we take a closer look at it, if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer, don't forget to check out KeysFan where you can find the budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get a bit cheaper so just in case you still haven't activated your computer don't forget to check out now let's check out the connectivity of this 4 times 2 matrix now starting with the HDMI outputs it has one which is number one with eARC support and the number two which is normal it supports everything with the exception of eARC it also has the four inputs one for each of the device that we want to connect. Number one supports eARC and number two, number three, number four are just normal inputs. And by normal, I mean that they will accept everything that you can check out down below in the video description, but they will not have the eARC support. We will also have the optical audio output and finally the DC input. At the front, we will find this selector for output one and output to LED display which will allow us to know which device is on each of the outputs. We have the button to activate eARC or deactivate eARC and then output 1 and output 2 selection button so that we can cycle through but we will take a look in just a few moments. We also have the selectors for the config and selectors for ADID and finally a micro USB for assistance or even for a firmware update and it supports up to 8k and i don't know about you but i don't have any tv that has 8k so what it will do in the meantime while we don't have an 8k device is that it will downscale to the resolution of the device that we are using so if it's a tv that only has 2k or 4k and your device has 8k it will downscale which is great depending on the source that it's using now one interesting thing is that it supports 4k at 120 hertz 10 bit and this is huge especially for those that want to connect an apple tv an android tv box and then want to connect any other media device like a dvd layer i don't think so any other media device and want to connect a high-end console gaming console or a high-end gaming computer and you want to have all the bells and whistles in terms of refresh rate in terms of gaming performance so if you are a gamer this is not something for the old generation that used a DVD player. This is a new generation device. But that being said, let's take a look on how easy it is to set up and how easy it is to use it. And now with a setup example for this cinema setup right over here with the Matrix from Ore BK402A, which we have seen during this video. But right now to give you a example of a realistic use case now i do have the projector screen halfway and the tv halfway only of course we would use this in a normal way either full open for the projector or fully closed for the tv experience nonetheless to share with you one of the possibilities that we can do with this matrix here we are half way through now this matrix supports eARC and arc so at this moment i've got my connection directly to the tv which supports arc but if your tv does not support then you can connect to sound bars i've got a split sound bar right over here which supports e arc and i can show you an image right over there and this will allow me for example to take advantage of the single e arc output for the sound bars and then it doesn't matter if i'm using the projector or the tv i will always have the sound coming out of the soundbar with 
all the formats available. Now the R function needs to be turned off just in case I want to use the optical out or the coaxial output and it supports HDMI 2.1 which means that we will have a variable refresh rate which is great especially if we are using different devices as I will show you in just a few moments and we also have low latency mode so if we want to use a computer or something else then we will have that possibility which is great and also fast V active. It also supports up to 8K. I do not have any device that supports 8K right over here, 4K only, but it doesn't matter because we will be able to use the matrix which will allow us to use different resolutions and it will downscale. But of course, as I mentioned on the video, for more specifications the link will be down below. And right now, for example, if I grab one of my remotes, this is the device number 4, uh, which is an Android TV box and I can just press play and if I press the volume up I will have the sound coming out of my TV over the HDMI eARC connection but I could connect these sound bars if I wanted to so this is just one of the examples now I'm going to leave this device connected to the projector but what I want to do right now is to come here and show you one of the ways that we can select the output so if I want to change the output for uh, my TV which is output one I just need to press the button for output one and there we go I've got my Nvidia Shield TV right now but the remote is right over there now if I press output two I will go cycle through to the device number two that I have connected which I believe it's the Minix Android box and I do have a mouse right over here so I could control it here or a computer for example and if I press again it will cycle to the next device which in this particular case it's the Google Chromecast TV that I've got right over here it takes a while but this depends on our TV and depends on our projector so there are TVs that are a lot faster this one right over here takes quite a while and it was actually the device that was sleeping already so right now I've got device number three and if I press the button again it will cycle through and right now you did check that it did sync up so we would see just for a brief few seconds that it turned off the projector and then it turns on both of them at source number four. The manual mode is one of the ways to change but I do prefer the remote control. So the remote control has got these buttons right over here, arrow left and arrow right and then the number. So if I want to go for my output one which is my TV and if I want source number one I just press number one and it will change to my source one which is the Nvidia Shield TV and I've got the remote right over here so I could control the Nvidia Shield right now and if I want to go to number two I can just press number two and my TV will cycle to number two but of course I don't need to go by the order I can just jump from number two for example to number four which is the same that I'm using on the projector right now so the potential is huge and I'm using the two sources one on top of the other but I could have just one screen next to the other or one screen on this room and another screen on the next room and of course we can use the arrow keys as well so if I want to move to source number three which is just the one uh, next or the one on the left I just need to press this button right over here and right now I'm on source number three and if I grab this remote I can control my TV and of course I'm using the TV as an example but we could do the other way around another button that might be interesting is the one for eARC which at this moment is activated but if we want to use the optical output for example we will need to deactivate the eARC and the other button of course is the power on and off and basically this is the way or one of the ways that we can use this matrix in terms of connectivity so that we understand a little bit better how this setup is working at this moment we've got here the ORE matrix 402A BK 402A to be more precise and I've got everything connected with the exception of the optical out and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack out because I'm using the 
HDMI arc available on the HDMI 1 output, which is this one right over here, and it goes directly to the HDMI arc that I've got on my TV. Now, this output 2 is going to my projector, and this is the way that we will be able to cycle through, as we could see before, with the out 1 and out 2 buttons and we can select any of the four sources available. Now I've got in source number one the NVIDIA Shield TV that we could see. I also have the source number two for this Android TV box right over here and then on source number three we have the Google Chromecast with Google TV and on number four we have the Realme 4K. But of course these are just examples. We can use any device that we Want. And in terms of audio output, if we don't want to use by any ways the HDMI ARC or eARC, we can connect the optical output or the 3.5 millimeter jack. Now, if we want to use these two, as I mentioned before, we will need to deactivate the eARC function, which we can do just press by this button right over here, or we can use the remote to enable or disable. At this moment, I'm able to achieve audio on these two ports right over here, optical or 3.5 millimeter jack, but if I enable it, then I will have audio on my HDMI device, but I will lose the audio right over here. So just have that in mind. Just easy as this to set it up and to use it. And it looks like a lot of devices and a lot of cables, but the matrix 4x2 will centralize everything and make with just one remote control, able to change between all those devices. Now, in this particular case that I did show you with one TV and one projector, I only use one each time. So probably I could get away with a device that only had one and then I could connect a splitter and I would save some money and that would be great. But the interesting part is that it's not easy to find a device that has ER capabilities along with all the features that we have seen and audio extraction at least that i've had the chance to grab my hands or even see it on specifications i still haven't so even for this crazy setup that i did show you this would be in my opinion of course the best choice and that being said hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you on the next one